welcome back family friends and fans it's karma lately thank you guys for stopping by today i just wanted to go over some of the tools that i am going to be using are tools that i think you should be using if you are going to go ahead and do a dollhouse kit of your very own and like i said in my previous video this is going to be the giveaway for the um 1000 uh subscriber giveaway challenge and um this is what we're going to be building and it is not complicated but it does take some patience and some dedication and of course tools and you should have a lot of these tools at home some of these tools you can also go to the 99 cent store don't think that you have to rush over to michael's or rush rush over to these expensive hardware stores you can also just go to your local 99 cent store and um and sometimes the art stores and the hardware stores do have deals and there's memberships also so you can get discounts as well so there's a lot of things that you can do for example i know for the artist supply and craftsman store on uh second street between fourth and fifth avenue and park slope if you're a teacher or student you get um a certain amount of a discount off of your purchase so that's something to consider as well um so we're going to start. The first thing I want to let you guys know is that this, um, this kit comes with this material list. Before you even shop for your tools for your kit, for building your kit, you should get your material list out. This is going to be really helpful in guiding you through the process of the um what you're going to be doing and some of the tools that you're going to be needing now what i loved about this materials list is this section here all these small pieces are actually to size and i can show you i'm going to grab some of these pieces Now this piece, it's the only piece of its kind on here, so it's gonna be really easy to match. And as you can see, it is the exact same size as this drawing, which is great. And this piece, this is the first time I'm doing this, so I'm just um, with this piece. I had first discovered it with, I think, one of these two pieces, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. Um, not that one. Looks like it's this one. So now, what I, what I would do, I would set this aside separately, um, either on a separate table or all the way off to the side, away from my workstation, and um, on a flat surface that's not going to be moved around or anything like that. And I would put all the pieces on top of their corresponding um, shapes because when you then look at the manual <clears throat> and the manual starts to tell you, okay, C2, then I know C2 is this one because the piece itself doesn't have the number on it or the code on it. But now that I've matched it onto its corresponding um, piece on the on the materials list on this diagram, now I know that C2. So that's going to be easy. And then this is the picture. And these are the three pieces that are going to be attached to make this cabinet. So I need C3, C2, C1. And then I need this paper, A12 to 28. So I'll go to my paper's... Um, all these like papers and I know that this one is a 12 to 28 right there so now I know that that is the piece I mean some of this is common sense I could have just picked it out based on the paper pattern but it's just going to be simplified so technically this is really just going to be a matter of having the patience to do it 
picking the time to do it and a team if need be if you're going to be doing it with a team and getting everybody together on the same page to do so it's not going to be a difficult task but i think that this is a really good tip um if your kit if your dollhouse kit does not have something like this then um we'll I'll, I'll try to go over all the different types of material this one in particular the coffee house i do have it in my store and that's why i'm going so into depth about it and i as i collect more of them and start working on more of them i will show you guys how to assemble them on the ch on this uh, channel um the kit came with these tools which i um i have all of these tools already but it's nice to have some of these fresh so we have this um centimeters uh centimeters ruler and it's centimeters on this side and centimeters on this side okay I happen to have my own ruler. Now, um, I like to use a clear one and I also like to use a stainless steel one, but with this clear one, um, sometimes I just like it because I can see through if need be. So up here it's inches and over here it's centimeters. But um, I like this one because it's so flexible and lays nice and flat. So, um, I'll be using both of those. They also give you a box cutter. I have tons of these. Um, and I also like to use a regular craft knife. So it does, you know, either one I think could do a really great job. I like to have a variety of these kind of cutters. But if you only have access to a box cutter, it's more than enough to get the job done. And they give you these cute little small scissors. This is going to be really good for cutting um, cutting these uh, papers and with precision and cutting all of this. If you have better scissors than this, which I believe I do, I have ones that are a little pointier and sharper, then um, I would go ahead and use that. But it's nice that they do send you some scissors these needle nose pliers are really they come with a little seal here these are really good for picking up small objects which you will be doing so it's nice to get yourself comfortable with using this kind of thing and picking up small objects i'm trying to see um if there are any small objects around here but there are not <laughs> um yeah i don't have anything small except for this but yeah you know if you needed to put it onto something and glue you know that you can just do that and set it there and that's um and then you can always close it back with the little notch that it has there we got that um i i just took this out but this is um this is my tool and um this could be used for um mod podging gluing on any kind of wall um any kind of papers or anything onto the wood i would probably use this applicator to do that and um they give you this screwdriver this small one for really small screws and i know that this is going to be to uh put in the music box into the wall so that's the ones that they give you right and i suggested this one i also would suggest that you have a pencil in case you need to make any measurements of your own um I suggest Mod Podge for the paper 
um, for the paper stuff. Also because with Mod Podge, you can use it to glue, to apply the paper on, like wallpaper or whatever it is, onto the wood or the MDF. And if you wanted that particular part of the house or that particular item that you're going to be using paper, you wanted it to stick out a little bit, you can use this gloss and Mod Podge right on top of the paper and it's gonna come out with a really, really nice finish. Okay, even on the wood, I would say. Um, speaking of wood, I have these coffee stirs and these kind of these kind of um this is a really really thin bendable pliable and it is to scale it is very small and it would look really great as uh floor planks for your um for your flooring so instead of say um using this for flooring for this for flooring i would probably use the coffee stirs and then i would stain them however um with some acrylic paint or or something i would or or ink and i would then stain the um you could even use marker to stain the wood but because it has these rounded edges, I'm going to end up using my Proxon Rotary Cutter, which I know I haven't used it in quite a while on this channel because it's been a while since I did floors. But the Proxon Rotary Cutter, I'm going to use it. Um, actually, my daughter's going to use it and she's going to end up cutting. I ordered this on Amazon and I forgot how much I paid, but I'll put the link in the description. I ordered these. It's a thousand um, grade A birch wood stirs, which is coffee stirs. And so she took out 300 of them. And she's going to cut the edges of 300 of these. I don't want to cut all of them because there's other projects where I would probably need the edges to be rounded. I think for the most part, I'm going to need the edges to not be rounded, but for now, I just need 300 of them cut. So not, and I'm not going to end up using 300 for this project, but just so that I have them handy for other projects. And once I'm done cutting these, staining them and put, applying them where I want to apply them with wood glue, which by the way, wood glue is probably going to be the only glue that I use to adhere the MDF. I would say do not use a glue gun, do not use a glue stick, do not use regular Elmer's glue, uh, do not use tacky glue, what else? I would not use Fabri-Tac, um, and I would not use crazy glue. Um, so for this, I would, I would only use wood glue or a glue that is PVA glue would be great. If you want to use a white Elmer's glue, I think if it's like an all-purpose extra strength one, I think it'll be fine. But I think the wood glue is the most ideal for the project. And this glue for adding um, like a, a nice sheen to things or for the paper, I would use this. And on top of the wood, um, you can put this polycrylic protective finish um you can find this at the 99 cent store and if not definitely in the hardware store and mine is already almost finishing but um i could definitely use it for this project um so that's in terms of glues if you really really felt like you didn't want to use glue for the papers like for the wallpapers and stuff um I would say use a very, very strong double-sided tape to bond the paper, but my opinion would be definitely try to get Mod Podge or create Mod Podge yourself with just two to three parts glue and one part water. Mix it up really good and there's your Mod Podge. And you can even add a couple of drops of this to the Mod Podge to make it a little bit more glossy.
And there's your Mod Podge um, recipe. I have this handy. These are some lights that I got from a website. Um, I think it's called The Lighthouse. Um, and these are really cool LED lights. They're miniature LED lights which is perfect for miniature projects, but I don't know if I'm gonna need these. Um, I think this would be cool, like if it's to decorate the dollhouse for Christmas um, and you wanna put a tree up in the coffee shop or you wanna just put lights all over the coffee shop, I would recommend these lights. And so as a bonus, I'm going to be um, putting this, I'm not going to be installing the lights for you. I'm just going to have the lights there inside the package. So for whoever wins it, you guys will be also receiving these LED lights. Um, just so that if you wanted to decorate for Christmas time or whatever, you have that option and it'll look really, really cute. So you're gonna get this as well in your dollhouse. Um, also, I would suggest having um, white paint and black paint just in case you needed to paint something. Um, and if you wanted to have like other color of paints, that's fine, but definitely the primary, um, not the primary, but definitely the main colors um, to have would be uh black and white for all the gluing and people who don't have as much patience as other people um i would say um you can try this i got this on amazon it was fairly cheap and you can try this like um this is a heating pen and it works really well for these little cute miniature projects and and of course, if you um, are doing small stuff, I would have like a small paintbrush and um, and pretty much that's it. I think that's it. Uh, I'm super excited about doing this project for you guys. I just wanted to show you because not everybody is going to win. Obviously, only one person is going to win the dollhouse and I encourage uh, many people, if you're interested and you like the way the dollhouse turns out, to please go on my store, karmaspieces.com, and order the dollhouse, uh, order the dollhouse kit, the coffee shop kit. This is a pin vise. It comes with different bits, drill bits, and you can make holes if you need to. Um, I like to use this to make uh, holes for hinges for doors and windows and that kind of thing but um, if you find yourself needing uh, to make holes and that kind of thing I would choose I would say for miniature projects definitely get yourself a pin vise and and I think that is it so I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me today and um, taking a look at all of the tools that I'm going to be using during my dollhouse kit um, project. And these are some of the starter tools. Obviously, there are many, many advanced tools, but I think for your first kit, this would be great. If you guys are working with cardboard and you want to make a dollhouse out of cardboard, like a do-it-yourselfer, you can use at that point a hot glue gun and then you could just get your glue sticks um, make sure you have enough glue sticks but yeah you could do that with cardboard but since we're going to be using mdf and wood and paper these are the uh, most ideal tools for that project thank you guys so much for your time and patience i cannot wait to get started and um I am going to be posting a video after this one, just a quick little update, and then we're going to get right into the dollhouse project. So I cannot wait to show you guys step by step. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, 
click the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos and I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.